out beforehand. Uh, anyway, uh, my name is Bobby. This is my jet engine I've cobbled together in my garage. Um, it's based off a Mitsubishi turbocharger TD04H 13C off the Volvo station wagon. That's uh, yeah, this, this whole thing here that's really warm. We just ran it, so I can't touch stuff really. Um, anyway, it works by. Uh, it sucks air in here from the intake. Uh, sends it so air is in? Air goes in intake? Here, intake. And uh, it spins it around and compresses it and sends it out to this tube here, which goes across to the combustion chamber here, which is the main part of the engine. Um, I'll probably like draw a picture on paint and explain it. But basically, Great. you've got like a 5 inch diameter tube on the outside. A four inch diameter tube that's just inside that goes from end to end and is sealed off. And there's holes drilled along the length of that to allow a certain amount of air to pass through at certain places. So the air has to go through those holes in a controlled manner to actually make it out the other side. Fuel is injected into the center of that. Via two nozzles, there's a really low flow rate nozzle which ignites on the spark plug really easily. And a high flow rate nozzle which kind of floods the whole thing with fuel to make it burn enough to keep it running. Um, you went through a whole Gatorade bottle here in what? Six minutes is that? Yeah. Of actual runtime? So. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really fast. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. The fuel went from maybe up here to basically gone. Uh, Ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, it burns. Uh, it goes to the exhaust turbine here, which is connected directly to that compressor wheel and out the back. Um, I guess I'll come to this side. Uh, this pump and motor combination here is the pumps, I guess I should say, are from a fountain drink machine, if I remember correctly. Um, anyway, the, the motor drives this pump. This is the oil container. So here's the motors back here. Oh, yep, you, can, motors. you can see the silver cylinder in the back, and there's a second motor for the fuel pump. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, this is the oil container here. All custom welded. Yep, I don't right. know if you can see it in the video. Pretty cool looking. I don't know. Um, oil container. Uh, this is the inlet. It sucks oil in from this end. Goes to the pump up here. This is the bypass valve, which is how it controls pressure. Some of it goes straight back to the oil tank. The rest of it comes up. This is the oil pressure sensor device. Um, goes up here to the intake on the turbo, or intake, sorry, oil inlet on the turbo. Uh, runs through the bearings and everything, and then just drains straight out the bottom into the oil tank. What we got here is a custom built adapter. Uh, I remember watching you make that. That was pretty sweet. He's just got two little, like, cap nuts that, uh, that he's welded together and then drilled a hole straight through the middle of them to go from, like, a plumbing standard to metric. the other metric. Nice. Yeah, so made itself a little adapter. So that's it for the oil system. This is the fuel system here, which looks really frightening. Uh, don't mind the string. It's just to prevent it from wobbling. And the paper clip? And the paper clip oh, is a cotter Oh, sorry, pin. that's a cotter pin. My right. bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but there's a paper clip cotter pin going through the... Uh, yeah, so we've got the, the well, fuel pump motor goes to the pulley, which goes to the pump. I had originally set it up just like the other one, with just the motor straight to the pump, but it was so much force for the motor to spin that it would fry the motors. And I burnt two of them up that way and decided that was a bad idea. So then I made that pulley with the help of Matt here. For me. Yeah. And I helped. And, uh, <laughs> and then we got that thing going. So we've got 
Um, over here on this side is our Gatorade bottle, which is I would have used a fuel canister, but I uh, I didn't want to have a whole container of gasoline in case something went horribly wrong. I didn't want a whole gallon of gasoline on fire. Good decision. Wise, wise. Didn't happen with the jet engine. Happened elsewhere. <laughs> Let's not discuss the gallon of fire. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it goes into the pump, it comes out of the pump, this is the vent, which is my first attempt to not build a pulley, because I was lazy, but that didn't work, and it didn't vent enough. Wait, what was, what was that? This one? I made this so I didn't have oh, to build that. Oh, it's a vent. That. Oh, okay. It just runs it straight back to the tank. To, to reduce the pressure, hopefully. More and, yeah, it left the pump spin faster, uh -huh. motor spin faster. Didn't work, built too much pressure, motor burnt out, so I had to make that. Cool. So, I still leave it fully open now. It makes it much easier to control the other one. Oh, but it goes uh, over here down to the, well, here's the T. This line, you can't shut off. It's the low flow rate nozzle, but it doesn't have enough fuel running through it to run the engine by itself. So it doesn't matter. It just keeps the flame going. Which, low flow rate is a relative term, I believe. No, it's really, really low flow rate. Oh, is it? I yeah. thought you were telling me that one still went pretty quick. It's uh, not... Really. Okay. It was a. It was enough. Well, I had that wrong. Immediately flood the spark plug and diesel. Um, but I mean that doesn't really take very much to flood the spark plug and diesel. So gotcha. Okay. Um, so we're using a really revolutionary hard. broken pulley technique, which um, no one no one's been able to figure out how we do it, but but. Yeah. That thing. Is that or really old. that or it just broke. It's really maybe old. maybe that was it. Maybe it just broke. Really <laughs> Time for a new one. Yeah, it's probably... We could super, we could super glue it. It's rubber. That's not going to work. <laughs> rubber cement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And duct tape. Yeah. There we go. All right, so anyway, yeah, here's the... Uh, the high flow rate? High, or sorry, this is the low flow rate. It's oh. offset and goes straight to the spark plug. Low flow, or... There's the spark plug. Backwards. Low flow rate, offset, goes to spark plug. Okay. High flow rate goes down the center. It actually goes down a T-shaped thing. I've got a picture of it, so... We'll have that. to include that. Great. Um, and then you haven't explained the distributor here. In the oh, yeah, that's right. But most light challenging part. starting to fail, so... Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, the car battery here runs to various switches, oil ignition, fuel, and all that stuff. Uh -huh. uh, I looked up, like, ten different circuits. Oh. I just shorted something. Oh, I must have turned the thing on as I moved it. Yeah. Let's disconnect that. Yeah, I must have just put two things together there. Uh, interesting. Okay. Anyway. We'll check that out after this. Yeah. Uh, distributor. Anyway, okay, so the, uh, I, I used a whole bunch of different electric circuits to try and drive an ignition coil, and none of them worked. So I finally discovered something called a buzz coil. Um, I think it was originally used on the Model A as their uh, ignition coil circuit. But anyway, it's basically a five-pin relay. You run the power through the uh, the normally closed side of the relay to the ignition coil, then to the coil on the relay, and back to the battery. So that as power flows through it, it goes to the ignition coil. To the coil on the relay, it opens it and it disconnects the power. And then when it's disconnected, the spring shuts again. And then power goes through, and then it opens it and it shuts it. So it just okay. buzzes really fast. Very cool. Uh, and you know about it. what frequency it's? No, I've got no idea. Like hundreds or? Probably. Okay. It makes, like, almost a continuous spark. You almost can't see it. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, it's really fast. But anyway, that's how you drive an ignition coil. DC pulses, I guess, become AC pulses. Um, yeah, that's the only way I could get that ignition coil to work. So where'd you get the coil from? Oh, oh you actually just bought one. I thought you might have scavenged it. I thought about it, but so it probably would have taken it. Got the coil running right there to the spark plug. Yeah. And everything's kind of custom welded into place, bracketed in, and it's really a it's really a custom job. You know, it's a matter of fitting everything together and forcing it and then sticking it in, tacking it and welding it, right? Yeah. Just kind of making it all fit. Yeah. Incredible stuff, though. And it uh, works pretty well so far. Yeah. I haven't killed myself yet. <laughs> Always a good policy. Yep. Uh, 
Yeah. Eventually I'll connect the second turbo to the back. Have a free power turbine set up here. <laughs> Pick that all on a go kart. Oh, oh my Sometimes god. Like that. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. Okay.